So, uh, let us talk about some other pressure distributions on the sheet, braze sheet pile wall uh, given by different uh, uh, researchers. So, the first one is you know sands. And we have already discussed about one of the pressure diagrams which was given by uh, Tazagi and Peck and this is for dense sands. For loose sands, the pressure diagram looks like this. This is 0.2 h point eight h and this axis remains same as 0.8 k into gamma h. This is for loose ends. Tazagi and Peck. There is another pressure diagram which has been uh, proposed by Shebotirov. These are all empirical pressure diagrams. This is 0.1 h. 0.2 h, 0.7 h and this is 0.8 k a into gamma h. The name of the person who assessed this pressure is uh, Shebo Terry off. Right? Uh, this is for sands and for clays, so this one is the dense sands. For clays, the pressure diagram is. 0.3 h, 0.55 h, 0.55 and 0.15 h. And this is gamma H minus 4 C. This is again given by Tazaki and Peck. However, the pressure distribution given by Shebotaryov for clays. is sorry, point six H. This is point four H. This is the pressure diagram. Point three times gamma H, point two times gamma H. This is for 
temporary support in a step class. And for permanent support in medium class, these values are 0.75H, 0.25H. This is 0.375H into gamma and the whole thing is uh, 0.5H into gamma. So, these are the pressure diagrams which have been proposed by uh, different uh, researchers who have worked in this topic. So, hope you can analyze these problems quite easily. Uh, the deep cuts which require support are supported by sheet piles and further by installing braces and struts. And then you are supposed to find out the cross section of these braces and struts. For that, the force is required. So, the moment you know the force, you know the stresses. You can select the right cross section of the element. The pressure diagrams are assumed, which are known or assumed. Superimpose on these structures, go for the equivalent beam method and uh, analyze them. So, with this, I will finish my discussion on the application of shear strength theory. Another application of shear strength theory, yes, uh, which is the analysis of retaining structures. And the last subtopic which I would like to discuss would be the slurry trenches, how slurries are used to stabilize the cuts or the trenches which are made, particularly in offshore regions, particularly wherever you have the soft face, all right or uh, for geo-environmental applications where you are having uh, the storage of let us say a different type of chemical or different types of industrial sludges, biosolids and so on. Okay. The, I would like to show you a video on how the slurry trenches are uh, being executed in the real life. These are also known as uh, soil bentonite walls and here you can see uh, a cut is being created or a trench is being created by excavation. And the point is how I am going to stabilize this trench. So, in the background you can see uh, the trench which has been created and this is a thick slurry uh, which could be of bentonite. You remember we have talked about bentonite slurry being used for stabilization of the cuts. Uh, these are mostly uh, used for geo-environmental applications. So, look at this where trench has been created. And then if you want to stabilize this trench, you have to fill this trench with the slurry of the bentonite. So, a fluid which is denser than the soil. Applications of this type of uh, development uh, would be uh, let us say landfill. If I want to isolate them from the environment, so that the leaches do not come into the uh, nearby area, you create trenches 
and then fill them up with slurries of bentonite. Those of you who are interested can watch few more videos which are available on the YouTube. So, depending upon the situation, yeah, there is another good video of uh, a slurry wall. Create a trench by cleaning it. This is the excavation going on. Sometimes we also call them as the cutoff walls. I can fill this trench with the cement slurry also if I want to create a system which is highly impervious or a bentonite slurry can also do. So, bentonite slurry is just for stabilization purpose and if you want to create a completely impervious wall which is embedded inside the ground then in that case uh, a cement slurry, lean concrete can be or a fly ash mix with the soil like uh, soil creed can be uh, you know pumped in. And what we will like to do is we like to analyze these type of situations that up to what type of height of the cut uh, the bentonite can be used for stabilizing the cut. This is for pumping the slurry. This is the slurry. All right. So, there are several videos of this sort which you can have a look at. And let us come back to the analysis part. So, suppose we are creating trenches in soils and we want to stabilize them the way it was shown in the video. So, there are two categories of the problems. One is in trenches in clays and the second one is uh, trenches in uh, uh, sands. So, the statement of the problem is like this. If this is a trench which I have created in a clay soil of height h. up to what height I should be filling the slurry unit weight of S is the unit weight of the slurry this becomes H1 
for the maximum possible protection what we can do is H1 can be equal to H also depends upon how much the factor of safety you require against the failure and this situation I like to analyze. So, you can use again the concept of the trial wedge. The weight is known, okay. The normal stress can be obtained, and this is the shear stress, pure cohesive material, alright. So, what is this angle? This will be 45 degree. Now, you can resolve the forces and you can obtain the factor of shift. So, tau is basically Cu, undrained cohesion of the soil mass. What is the force coming as far as stabilization is concerned? The force is coming in the form of, because this is slurry, so I can assume that this is the pressure which is, which is exerted by the slurry or P only. Clear? So, this is the force diagram. Now, can you show that the factor of safety for this type of a system will be equal to or would be a function of Cu gamma of the soil and gamma S of the slurry and what else? H height of the trench and H1. So, these are the parameters which can be utilized for designing the whole thing. So, for the sake of simplicity we are doing H1 equal to H and uh, can you just apply your common sense to find out what will be the factor of safety for this type of a system. Yes, upon gamma S minus gamma into H, true. How will you obtain this? Just equilibrate the forces and take their components. So, you have the P slurry, T component, N is not required, N can be eliminated, and then other equation comes in the form of W and tau. So, this is the factor of safety of the system when you are going for a slurry trench. I have done a mistake here. Uh, this should be gamma minus gamma s because gamma is the unit weight of the soil and gamma s is the slurry. So, gamma s cannot be more than the unit weight of the soil, you are right. Thank you. Now, Cu undrained can be obtained. I know the value of uh, the unit weight of the slurry, the gamma is known. So, this is the factor of safety against the failure. So, how will you read this? The more the cohesion, factor of safety is more. More the height of the cut or height of the trench, factor of safety is going to be less. So, truly speaking, for the critical situation or the limiting situation, this value is equal to 1. So, what we are getting is 4 times Cu equal to gamma minus gamma S into H. This 4 times Cu is an offshoot of 2C. What is 2C? The earth pressure which is coming in cohesion case, alright. Ka gamma H minus 2C root Ka. So, root K equal to 1. So, this becomes minus 2C that term is coming over here. Now, this becomes the limiting condition which you will obtain by analyzing the free body diagram of this system. Just try this. 
this concept can also be extended to the sands. All right. How will you do that? In case of sands, I will assume that this angle is theta. Rest of the things are same. And this is going to be equal to 45 plus alpha by 2 let us say. Because phi is not known or phi is known both. <laughs> so, phi is known. So, we will assume this as phi. Now, what I want to do? I want to again compute the factor of safety for a situation when I am retaining the sands. So, if you use the same concept in the free body diagram, what I should be getting as factor of safety? 2 times gamma into slurry root of this upon gamma minus gamma s into what term? This is something interesting to remember. Say tan phi what is the significance of this factor of safety is equal to 1 that is what is being obtained by this term the deviation of the slurry from the soil mass and then friction angle is the friction angle of the material. So, this becomes a sort of a penalty term on the friction angle of the soil mass. Try to work it out. These are interesting problems. We know the W, we know the pressure which is coming from the slurry. Okay. So, W upon P f is a sort of a tan of 45 plus alpha by 2 term. Yes. And tan of alpha and tan phi by tan alpha itself is a factor of safety term. So, these are the good examples of how the uh, simple concepts can be applied to obtain uh, the solution to the most critical but practical problems which uh, we are facing. Good. So, we have discussed lot of things particularly uh, related to the application of shear strength theory in the form of earth pressures. These are all applications of the earth pressures which are acting on the system and earth pressure itself is an application of shear strength parameters. So, interestingly what we have done in this course so far is spent enough time in understanding how to obtain the shear strength parameter or the characteristics of the soil mass. We have defined the state of stress in the soil. Using that concept and the shear strength parameters we have obtained the earth pressure which are acting on the system and then we discussed about so many applications. Rigid earth retaining structures, flexible retaining structures like sheet pile walls and then within the sheet pile walls we have talked about the uh, cantilever sheet piles, we have talked about the bulkheads, we have talked about the uh, you know trenches, bracing, struts and then at the end how to use slurry to stabilize the trenches. So, with this I am going to close uh, the discussion on earth pressure theory. Thank you. Thank you.